In the vast expanse of space, the moon has always captivated the human imagination. Among the many lunar mysteries, the discovery of a peculiar tower on the far side of the moon by a Soviet spacecraft stands out. In July 1965, the Soviet spacecraft Zond-3 embarked on a historic journey, becoming the first mission to capture images of the far side of the moon. Zond-3 successfully transmitted photographs, revealing previously unseen terrain on the lunar surface. However, among the images, one stood out, an intriguing tower-like structure perched on the moon's far side. The tower discovered by Zond-3 remains a topic of speculation and debate. The photographs captured a large tower-like formation rising from the lunar surface. Its distinctive shape and apparent structure have ignited curiosity and inspired countless theories about its origins and purpose. The enigmatic tower on the far side of the moon has generated various theories and speculations. Zond 3 was meant to reach Mars, and photographing the far side of the moon was a secondary objective for the spacecraft. Scientists equipped the Zond 3 with extremely useful technologies, equipping the spacecraft with two cameras, infrared and ultraviolet spectrometers, a magnetometer, a cosmic ray detector, a solar particle detector, and a meteoroid detector. Zond 3 made its way to the moon 33 hours after being launched on July 18, 1965. Just as it passed the far side of the moon, its cameras started exploring the far side of Earth's satellite, focusing on the 30% that its predecessor, Luna 3 had missed, taking one picture every 2 minutes and 15 seconds for a total period of 1 hour and 8 minutes. After a period of 9 days from taking the images, Zond 3 transmitted these images back to the Soviet operators on Earth. These images were the first of their kind, and helped scientists discover several geological formations present on the far side of the Moon. However, one of these images particularly intrigued the researchers, and those interested in the unknown. On the far side of the moon, a puzzling tower-like structure is visible in one of the images taken. The structure stands out as there is no other similar formation in its vicinity. The image is believed by researchers to be compelling proof for their theory of possible advanced structures on Earth's moon. As of right now, very little information has been released about the structure. Interestingly enough, this isn't the first time that mysterious monoliths have been found throughout our solar system, and it's for this reason that researchers have suggested that they could be evidence of advanced life. Some propose natural explanations, suggesting that the formation may be a result of geological processes or impact crater remnants. Despite the intrigue, many scientists approach the tower with skepticism. They argue that the tower-like appearance may be an illusion caused by lighting conditions, shadows or pixelation in the Zond 3 images. They emphasize the need for further exploration and comprehensive data to provide a clearer understanding of the lunar terrain. The discovery of the tower on the far side of the moon has fueled the ongoing quest for knowledge about our celestial neighbor. As space exploration continues to advance, upcoming missions aim to uncover more secrets hidden within the moon's unexplored regions. These missions, equipped with advanced technology and instruments, hold the potential to provide more detailed observations and insights into the lunar mysteries. Dr. Gordon Gallup says alien life may be too scared of dangerous humans. The idea that we are not alone in the universe has paved the way for some of the best science fiction films and fueled many conspiracy theories. The odds are that there must be life out there, perhaps more advanced than us. So, if that is the case, why haven't these aliens reached out? Dr. Gordon Gallup, a biopsychologist, has suggested that the existence of alien life is not implausible, but that the reason we have not heard from the alternate life forms out there is that they could be afraid of us, the dangerous and violent humans. Dr. Gordon Gallup, who works at the University of Albany, presents the view that the awful acts us humans take out against one another, not to mention our planet, might be keeping aliens at bay. If they can see what we are like as a species, why would they want to reveal their presence? Gallup calls us humans, quote, violent and dangerous, citing our many and constant conflicts as a reason to be too afraid to let us discover them. He says, if there is intelligent life elsewhere, they may view humans as extremely dangerous, 
we pose too great a risk and they do not want to be discovered. The point Gallup makes was published in the Journal of Astrobiology and he is not sugarcoating our awful impact on the world. He was clear that the impact of the planet and our own societies are far too destructive to appeal to extraterrestrial guests. His argument is that if there is intelligent life out there, they certainly are not likely to visit Earth. Gallup's idea that we are scaring aliens away is a new twist in the warnings we have been given before. Scientists, most notably the late great astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, famously had concerns should we ever interact with aliens. He agreed it was likely there was intelligent alien life out there, describing people who claimed we were the only intelligent life form as arrogant. He thought it was us who had a cause for concern, not them. He likened the arrival of aliens on Earth to the arrival of Christopher Columbus first making it to America, which, as we know, had a truly tragic impact upon the indigenous populations already in America. He believes any intelligent life that is far more evolved than us would have little concern in taking over our lands and home for their own gain, quite the opposite view to Gallup. Whether you believe it is us for whom an alien encounter would end badly or for the aliens themselves, both scientists seem to agree that we should not go looking for any alien buddies anytime soon. Lost continents beneath Antarctica and veiled in old satellite. Sometimes the newest discoveries can come from the most unlikely places. A satellite that is no longer in use was able to point researchers towards ancient continents that were yet to be discovered. This was after old data underwent a new analysis. The Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer, or GOCE, mission's data was analyzed again in 2018, nine years after its initial launch. The second look over this data has shown cratons in the lithosphere. This essentially means that in between the mantle and crust of Earth, there are some rocky areas that we had not guessed were there. Scientists seem to believe that the cratons or rocky areas that have been found are leftover structures that had formed ancient continents, and further research into them could provide an insight into how the continents we know today are composed. An official statement made from those involved in the study at the European Space Agency explained the potential for a modern application of this research and how it may particularly aid our understanding of Antarctica due to its close proximity. The co-author of the research paper, Fausto Faricioli, and science leader of geology and geophysics at the British Antarctic Survey described Antarctica's composition as an exciting mosaic of geological features. He goes on to explain that throughout East Antarctica, there is an observable array of similarities that can be seen in the Antarctic crust and the crust of the continents it was once joined to 160 million years ago. The GOCE satellite was in orbit between March 2009 and November 2013 before it was declared not working. Satellites are built to have a short lifespan at the moment, between 5 and 15 years, as designing them with longevity in mind is a complex task due to the inconsistency in solar arrays or simply running out of fuel. When active, GOCE was built to observe changes, fluctuations and variations in the gravity on Earth, no matter how minuscule they may have appeared. The data collected produced a worldwide global gravity map. It also revealed that there were local changes in gravity with a small resolution of 80 kilometers. The new analyses unearthed the ancient continents when a map of shape indexes was created by researchers at the British Antarctic Survey and Kiel University. When making this research more accessible, the European Space Agency compared the space indexes to contours you might see on a map. Jörg Ebbing, a geophysicist working with Kiel University in Germany, elaborated on the necessity of looking at both the gravitational data and the seismological data simultaneously in order to ensure more consistency and accuracy when producing images of both the crust and upper mantle of the Earth. Creating these images and 3D modeling is necessary for researchers to do if they want to understand the mechanics behind how plate tectonics and the deep mantle interact. The next step in this research is to see how the ancient continents are impacting modern-day Antarctica and how climate change could affect these ancient continents in their dormant state. 
Researchers hope the gravity gradients, which have been freshly scoured through, can help find some answers. The discovery of ancient continents and gravitational variations is certainly not a simplistic field of study, but one with great promise and an exciting future ahead of it. A Belgian farmer accidentally moves the border of France. We tend to believe that country borders are, in our modern time, set in stone, but apparently this is not the case, as a Belgian farmer managed to spark controversy by re-establishing the French border. When an enthusiastic historian was walking in the forest between the two countries, he noticed that the stone, which symbolised the boundary between Belgium and France, had been moved a whole 7.5 feet. It turned out that a nearby farmer moved the stone because it was in the path of his tractor, unaware of the importance of the stone and, with the stone, he moved the entire portion of France's border. For the most part, both the Belgian and French populations have been able to laugh about the situation, although state officials are somewhat antsy over the move. The slightest move of a border brings with it tons of paperwork and establishments to sort out. The current border spans 620 kilometers, and the border was established in 1820 after Napoleon's infamous Waterloo defeat. The stone's original placement dates back to 1819, when the border was initially planned out. The mayor of the Belgian town where the border lies commented on the matter jovially. I was happy, my town was bigger, but the mayor of the French town opposite the border, boussigny sur was less amused. All those involved agreed on one thing, however, that a border conflict ought to be avoided. Currently, the plan is to make the Belgian authorities contact the farmer and have him return the stone to its original location. Though, if that does not happen, the case will be taken to the Foreign Ministry of Belgium and might cause another Franco-Belgian conflict, with the farmer risking criminal charges if he refuses to comply. The Treaty of Kotlik is a historical event of importance that is responsible for the formation of the border. There are several smaller treaties involved under it, signed by France back in the 19th century, but these treaties failed to solve all the Franco-Belgian problems of the territory. For the next few years, from 1820 until 1825, the French and Belgian people argued over the border's exact positioning. Borders of the 19th century, in general, were a thing of nightmares. With countless revamps, especially when it came to French borders with rivers bursting or rerouting, which, in turn, required revised border discussions with the neighbouring nations. The borders had to move again after the 1914 to 1918 conflict, when Alsace-Lorraine was returned from Germany under the Treaty of Versailles, which prompted debates of whether the Franco-Belgian border should also be re-established, but the discussion was abandoned soon thereafter. It is fortunate that Belgium and France have such a great political social relationship because there have been reports of locals moving and even vandalizing other countries' border landmarks as symbols of rebellion between neighboring nations with poor social political connections. The fact that both France and Belgium took the accidental movement of the border in comedic stride helps avoid conflict, but there is always the potential for future problems. As much as we like to believe we handle things better than leaders of our past, it is easy to fall into a conflict with other countries regarding borders and civil rights. Rare 1500-year-old painting of Jesus Christ found in an abandoned church in the Israeli desert. Whether you attend church regularly as a practicing Christian or your views of the religion have been shaped from the media or primary school church visits, Many people have an image as to what Jesus looks like, ingrained in their minds. However, a painting from 1500 years ago may call that image into question. The Western media, in modern society and historically, Jesus Christ is often presented with long hair and a beard, among other traits. However, an early painting discovered in an ancient Israeli church presents a vastly different image. A team of archaeologists from the University of Haifa in Israel stumbled across this painting whilst conducting research in the Negev desert, in the ruins of a Byzantine farming village. Emma Mayan Fanar, an art historian from the university, was present upon the discovery of the church painting. In an interview with Haaretz, an Israeli newspaper, she made this statement, I was there at the right time, at the right place, with the right angle of light, and suddenly I saw eyes, she continues, explaining that the image depicts Jesus at his baptism. 
Despite the classic Western expectations for Jesus to be portrayed as bearded with long hair, at no point do the Gospels offer a description of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, no known description exists in work developed later on. Instead, this popular image of Jesus, or rather any image seen, is an artistic interpretation and vision. Mayan Fanar said, when speaking to Haaretz, that in the past, Jesus has been shown with many different appearances, long hair, short hair, with a beard, without a beard, to name just a few variations. Apparently, by the 6th century, the image of Christ with long flowing locks and a beard had been shown as the most consistent representation, an image that has continued in Western cultures even into the 21st century. The image found in Israel is not overly clear, with sun exposure having impeded the clarity of the artwork. It holds rough outlines and small smears of colour, though many details have not stood the test of time since its estimated creation in the 6th century. The team of archaeologists say the church's image of Jesus shows him to have short curly hair, a prolonged face, large eyes and an elongated nose. According to the work published by the team in the journal Antiquity, it was fairly common for Christ to be represented as having short hair throughout Egypt and Syro-Palestine. However, this convention seemingly disappeared from the later Byzantine art. One reason for this is that during the early 8th century, it was outlawed to create religious images. This was one aspect of what would later be named the iconoclastic controversy, in which lots of Christians in the Byzantine Empire considered the creation of religious art equal to the worship of icons. This was illegal and prohibited by Emperor Leo III in 726 AD and remained as such until the mid-9th century. This adds to the value of this discovery, highlighting the rarity of an Israeli depiction of Christ in this time period. While we have no answers as to the true appearance of Christ, it certainly is fascinating to understand why certain depictions have arisen and become more popularized when they may just be deemed less accurate or on par with often unseen interpretations of Jesus. This interesting discovery is certainly an intriguing discussion point into modern understandings of religion. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.